In this video, I'm going to look at how you can write a good explanation using the idea of superposition of waves. To illustrate the general approach, I'm going to use this example question, where a microwave transmitter and receiver are positioned as shown in the diagram. So you've got the transmitter here, receiver here, and <coughs> explain why the metal sheet over here, when that's moved to position B, that the receiver changes from receiving a very strong signal to a very weak signal. The steps you should include in your explanation are 1. Can you split the question in half? Can you make the question into two smaller questions, which will make it easier to answer? Secondly, where are the two waves coming from that are interfering? Thirdly, how does the phase of these two waves ar that are arriving compare? Fourthly, can you explain why the phase of the two waves is what you said in number three by considering the paths that they've followed? Five, what kind of interference is there, constructive or destructive? Six, what is the resultant wave amplitude? Is it a large resultant wave amplitude or a small resultant wave amplitude? And seven, link that back to explaining the observation which you were asked to explain in the first place. So returning to our example question, the first thing is, can we split the question into two smaller questions? This one splits quite easily. Basically, we can explain why the metal sheet in this position gives a very strong signal at the receiver. And then our second question to split it into would be, why does, when the metal sheet is in position B, do we get a very weak signal at the receiver? In the rest of the video, I'm going to concentrate on explaining the first of these little questions, why we got a very strong signal when the <coughs> metal sheet was in its original position. So we've done this, now we need to consider where are the two or more waves coming from. So some prompt questions to decide where the two or more waves are coming from. Firstly, is there more than one source? In this case, no, there is only one transmitter. <coughs> Second question, is there one source with more than one path for the waves to take? At first glance, it appears not. The waves would just go from the transmitter to the receiver. But then if we think, is there one source but something that could cause a reflection, we realise that the metal sheet could cause a reflection, which means, as well as a path from the transmitter directly to the receiver, we could also have a path that went from the transmitter to the metal sheet and back to the receiver. So now we've done these first two ones, and in the kind of logical flow of your final explanation, I would say that you would want to now go on to number three. But I find it's actually easier if you think about five and six next, and then that helps you to decide what three and four must be. So a reminder that we're going to concentrate on explaining just why we get a very strong signal when the metal sheet is in its original position. Hopefully you can fairly immediately see that that means we must have which kind of interference? Constructive interference, which is giving us a large resultant wave. So having thought about these two, we're now going to skip back and think about three. How does the phase of the two waves arriving compare? So the two waves at the bottom here we could say are currently in phase or we could say the phase difference of the waves is zero degrees or zero radians. However now we could say the waves are out of phase or we could say they're in antiphase or we could say they're 180 degrees or pi radians out of phase, or we could say the waves have a phase difference of pi radians or 180 degrees. But remember, we were trying to explain why we had a very strong signal. We decided that there was constructive interference, which means the waves must be in phase. So now we need to think about number four. Can we explain why the waves are in phase? by considering the paths that they took. So let's consider this wave x, 
which is the way, part of the wave that has travelled directly from the transmitter to the receiver. And let's consider this wave Y, which is the part of the wave which has travelled from the transmitter to the metal sheet and back to the receiver, like that. So clearly wave Y has had considerably further to travel because it's gone all the way to the metal sheet and back, which means it will be delayed compared to wave um, X, which might look something like that. <coughs> but remember, we decided that waves X and Y must be in phase so that they gave constructive interference to give us our large amplitude signal. Therefore, this must mean that wave X has travelled an integer number of wavelengths, in this case this should actually be less, than wave Y. This means that the peaks and troughs of the waves still line up and we will still get our constructive interference. So now we've considered all the parts separately, let's see if we can put it all together to make a good explanation. So when the metal sheet is in its original position, then part of the wave given out by the transmitter will go from the transmitter directly to the receiver, and part of the wave given out by the transmitter will go all the way to the metal sheet and be reflected back to the receiver. These two parts of the wave will arrive in phase, and that's because the part of the wave that is reflected from the metal sheet to the receiver has to travel an extra distance compared to the part of the wave that goes from the transmitter directly to the receiver, and that extra distance will be equal to an integer number of wavelengths. Because the two parts of the waves arrive in phase, it will produce constructive interference, which will make a large resultant wave which means that the receiver receives a very strong signal. So now it's your turn to try the other half of the question, where you've got to explain why, as you move the metal sheet this way, towards this position, do we start to get a very weak signal. And you'll need to consider the two waves, or the two parts of the wave, what their phase must be, or what the phase difference of the two waves must be, Explain that using the paths that they took. Think about what kind of interference there must be, what the resultant wave amplitude is now, and how that explains your observation of the very weak signal. You may find it useful to visit earlier parts of the video to get the suitable keywords for talking about the phase, for talking about the paths, um, to help you with your explanation. I hope you found this video useful.